As you watch this teaching, I would like to ask you to please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner, and today you're going to be so blessed because Denise is going to be speaking to you on today's program, and her theme is, Help Me Lord, My Mouth is Making Trouble for Me. This teaching thrilled my heart, and I know it's going to be a blessing to you. And today... I am going to be sharing out of my book, The Who Stole Cinderella, and actually we are going to study from chapter two, and it's called The Dripping Faucet or a Running Sewage. Oh, what are you, you're saying, what does that mean? Well, I'm going to tell you because today we're going to talk about the power of our tongue. And the scripture says in James chapter three, verse five, listen to what it says about the tongue. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boast of great things. See how great a forest a fire uh, this little member can cause. Oh my, just that little tongue can cause a fire. I know, ladies, that in my life, my own tongue, as the Bible calls it, a little member has started some fires. And, and maybe yours has started some fires too. And we're going to talk today about the power of our tongue and what that has to do in our relationship with our husband. And our first scripture is Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1, which says that a wise woman builds up her house and a foolish one tears it down with her own hands. And I know for certain that you do not want to be a foolish woman and I don't either. And for the difference between a foolish woman and a wise woman is the wise woman has wisdom and she's seeking wisdom. The foolish woman has said in her heart, I don't need any instruction. I'm fine. I can do it all myself. And the Bible actually calls that person who runs from correction a fool. And I know, ladies, because you're with me and you're listening, that that's not you. And I pronounce over you right now that you are a wise woman. Now, part of us building up our house is learning to respect our husbands. And I'm going to show you that in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33. And it says, nevertheless, let each one of you in particular, and this is talking to the husbands, so love his own wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband. So you see, it's the husband's responsibility to love his wife. And we all love that. We want him to love us. But it's our responsibility as a wise woman to respect our husband. Now, I heard someone say that this scripture is the favorite of all marriages, but it's not, but it turns it around for the husband. His favorite part is that the wife would respect her husband. And for the woman, her favorite part of this scripture is that the husband would love him, love her as he loves himself. But the scripture is to the husband that he is to love you and it's to us that we are to respect our husband. So I want to talk to us, to you today about the power of our tongue. And so we're going to start in Proverbs chapter 19 and it's verse 13. Now I'm looking in my Bible. I hope you have your Bible for Proverbs chapter 19, verse 13. And this is a very powerful scripture. And you're going to see why in just a minute. All right, it says, A foolish son <clears throat> is the ruin of his father, and the contentions of a wife are a continual dripping. Well, 
I told you that the chapter is called that we're speaking from a dripping faucet or running sewage. Well, in the English translation, it says a dripping faucet. So let's talk about that first. So a dripping faucet. Now, what do you want to do when you see or hear a dripping faucet? You want to somehow turn that sound off because you do not want to spend your night listening to blop, 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 blop. You're saying, somebody, please get a plumber and turn that dripping faucet off. Well, ladies, when you and I find ourselves complaining, griping, fault-finding, criticizing, then we, through the scripture, through the, the wisdom of the Holy Spirit teaching us here, we are just like that dripping faucet. And what does your husband want to do to a dripping faucet? What do you want to do for a dripping faucet? You want to turn it off. Ladies, we don't want our husbands to have an attitude of like, would you just please turn her off? We want our husbands to like want to hear what we have to say, to, to enjoy our company and what comes out of our mouth. But if it's fault finding, if it's complaining, if it's trying to change him, if it's judging him, then it's like a dripping faucet. And then in the Russian translation, it's even stronger. It says that a contentious woman is like sewage coming out of her mouth. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, that's just terrible. None of you, I don't, I don't want my words to be like or smell like or look like sewage to my husband. I know you don't either. Nobody wants to be around sewage. Nobody wants to be around the smell. Nobody wants to get the stain of it on their clothes. We always try to get it out. No one wants to be around sewage. And the scripture is saying, if we're fault finding or complaining all the time, time or correcting our husband, then for his heart, and for his, his ears, it is like sewage that he wants to escape from. Oh, ladies, I don't want this to be in me, and I know you don't want this to be in you. Well, let's keep looking at how powerful our tongue can be in our marriage. So look with me now at Proverbs 21, verse 9. In your Bibles, Proverbs 21, verse 9, it says, Better to dwell in the corner of a housetop than in a house shared with a contentious woman. <gasps> when I first saw this, I thought, oh my, if it's minus 27 outside, it's better for my husband to be on the roof in the freezing cold than to be in the house with me. I know you don't want that. I don't want that. I don't even want my life to even look anything like that. I want my husband to not be on the roof. I want him to be in the house with me. I want him to think that he enjoys my company. I don't want him to think it's better and safer for him to be on the roof than to be in the house with me. And I'll just tell you a little joke that I tell. So when, because I act like uh, that I'm a contentious woman. And so the phone rings and I say, and the person says, where is your husband? Where's Pastor Rick? And I say, oh, excuse me a minute. He's on the roof. <laughs> He's on the roof because he's trying to escape from my speech. It's safer for him up there than it is in the house with me. And ladies, I know that you don't want that. And I don't want that either. We want our mouths to be something that our husbands enjoy. Look at verse 19. 
Better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman. Oh, brother, that means that it would be better for your husband, my husband, to be in a desert, dying of thirst, seeing mirages, hoping for water, almost dying, than to be in the house with you or with me. Ladies, this is so clear. It's so clear. God in his mercy is speaking to you and I through the scriptures. He's saying, ladies, is there's a better way. It doesn't matter how your mother was or how your grandmother was or what you saw growing up. We don't have to be that way. We don't have to be griping, complaining, and controlling and trying to change them all the time because we're getting instruction from the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. He has anointed this Word for it to go into our heart as truth that we listen to and that we say, Lord, I hear you. I don't want to be that contentious woman. Now, if your mother or your grandmother, they were respectful to your dad or your grandfather, you need, if you can, you need to go give them a big hug and tell them thank you because they did something wonderful for you. But if, if they didn't, of course, we need to forgive, but we need to say, God, I want to go with the scripture because in the scripture, if we obey the scripture, it's going to bring light to us. It's going to bring life to us. It's going to be more joy into your marriage. It's powerful, isn't it, ladies? Now, I want you to go to another scripture with me, and it is Proverbs chapter 27, verse 15 and 16. Do you have your Bibles? Open with your Bibles. You probably have your phone or your iPad. And we're in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 15 and 16. And it says, A continual dripping on a rainy day and a contentious woman are alike. Whoever restrains her restrains the wind and grasp oil with his right hand. Now, ladies, again, we don't want to be continually dripping. We don't want to be, uh, have a personality and a, and a habit where if our husband sits down, he sat down wrong. If he works, he doesn't make enough money. If he sleeps, he snores and you can't sleep with them. If he, if he, uh, if he's talking, you have to correct his speech. You don't want to be that way. I don't want to be that way. And in this scripture, I looked this up, what scholars say. And it says when it says a continual dripping, it's not just a dripping. It's like somebody taking buckets of water and pouring it on your husband. What can he do? What can he do? That's the part that gets my heart. If, if our mouth is involved in putting them down and judging, criticizing them, and, it's, and the Bible's saying it's like buckets of water being poured on them. And what can they do? It's saying, ladies, we need to change. I want, to bring, I want to bring buckets of blessing on my husband, not to, to drown him out or to criticize him so much that he even doubts of his worth. And women, we have that power. Our words are so powerful. When we don't accept our husbands and we criticize them and judge them and trying to change them because we're supposed to respect them, then that looks like, to them, it looks like we don't love them. 
Because, see, respect to them, they receive that as love. To us, attention and kindness, that ministers love to us. But what ministers love to your husband is your respect to him. And so we want to do what we, all we can to turn our ear to the scripture and say, God, God, speak to my heart. Let this go in, into my heart. I want to grab a hold of this, Lord. I want to repent. I want to run from trying to correct my husband all the time. Ladies, I've seen a woman who every time her husband spoke, she corrected him. If he, if he sat down, he did it wrong. If he worked, she had something to say about him. And I honestly saw it was like buckets of water she was pouring on him. And the next part of that verse says that it, she's like wind. Well, who can control wind? No one can control the wind. And the Bible is saying that the only one that can help us is God. Submitting our will, submitting our tongue to God and saying, God, I've been guilty of this and I don't want to do it anymore. And I'm making a choice. You don't have to be emotional about it. You, repentance doesn't mean being emotional. It means making a decision. It means turning around and going the other direction. And because of the power of the Holy Spirit in you and in me, we by our will can say, Lord, I'm not going to do that anymore. Another description in that verse, it talks about oil. Well, as I, as I study the commentators, when we criticize and judge and try to correct our husband, it's like oil on his hands. And it's a strong oil. It's a smell. And he can't get it off of his hands. And it's obvious that he has that oil on him. Ladies, we have so much power to either build up our house or tear down our house. And we, through our words, can put such a smell on them that it, it influences them not in a good way. It can, ask, it can actually cause them to doubt themselves. Proverbs chapter 31 I want to show you this amazing verse. Proverbs chapter 31 says, <clears throat> in verse 11, it says that the heart of her husband safely trusts her. So he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. Okay, now, the heart of her husband safely trusts her. There's power in that because look at the next verse. So he will have no lack of gain. <laughs> so her words actually even affect his success. So ladies, what does that say? So if our words can affect his success negatively, then our words of affirmation and praise can affect his success positively. Oh, what kind of power do we have in this tongue, as the Bible calls it, a little member? We can, you say, how am I going to do this? Denise, help me. How am I going to do this? Well, David, in Psalm 141, he prayed. And look what he said in Psalm 141, verse 3. He said, set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Now, this king who had a lot of authority, a lot of wisdom. Yes, he made mistakes, but he repented. And the Bible still calls him a man after God's own heart. David is still called 
the greatest king of Israel. So there are things that we can learn from him. And this man was praying this prayer. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth and keep watch over the door of my lips. Ladies, you and I can pray that very same prayer. You know, don't say, well, this is too hard. I can't do this. Don't say that, ladies. I've heard other ladies say, when they heard this teaching, they repented. They said, well, I don't know if I'm going to be talking very much in my house. But they repented. And you know what they said to me the next week after we met together? They said, I closed my mouth. I quit criticizing. And I've never had so much peace in my home. Do you want peace in your home? I want peace in my home. And the Bible, our first scripture, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1, says that you and I have power to either build up or tear down. And we have power through our speech to show respect to our husband. And that's going to build him up. That's going to build our house up. You know, when you respect your husband, and I've heard, heard other ladies say this also, that when they started respecting their husband, they started being kind to their husband, they quit criticizing their husband, that it had an effect on their children. That their children started to respect their father because they saw their mother respecting their dad. That's how much power you have in your home. Don't underestimate your power that you have in your home. The scripture doesn't lie. God can't lie. We as women, we're either building up or we're tearing down. And you as a wise woman listening to me right now, you're getting wisdom. Now the Bible says if we just hear it and we don't do it, then we're worse off than if we just heard it. The power is in the doing. And ladies, it's our responsibility. The first time I read that scripture, Proverbs 14, 1, I was so struck with it's either build up or it's tear down. There's not a middle ground. But the Holy Spirit is giving us wisdom. And today, through this teaching, is giving you wisdom, me wisdom, to continue to make the choice that I'm responsible. Doesn't matter what somebody else say and is saying to me. I'm responsible for what comes out of my mouth. And you can see by the prayer of King David that he took responsibility of what came out of his mouth. And he was a powerful man. But he said, God, set a watch over my mouth. So ladies, you and I can pray that same prayer. I have so enjoyed being with you today. You know, I just love you. I, I just, I want women to have a happy marriage. I was just with a young woman today. And she said to me, she's been married 11 years. And she said to me that she believed that we could have happy marriages. Eleven years. They had their struggles, but they communicated. They got through. And now she's working on, working on, and working on re being a respectful wife. And she's having happiness in her marriage. Oh, ladies, that's what I want for you. I have happiness in my marriage, not because, not because I just know the scripture. No, that doesn't do it. 
but it's because I've done it with all my heart to do what I've told you to do today, to keep a watch over to my mouth, to repent, to apologize. I've apologized for the fires that I've started. There's great power in that, ladies. And what's happening to us when we turn our attention to the word of God and to do the word of God that we're changing on the inside. What was habitual for us to do, we're changing our habit. We're changing from one who used our mouth to tear down our husband to one who on purpose and by our decision and the conviction of the Holy Spirit to his scriptures, we said, Lord, I choose to use my mouth to build up my husband, to affirm my husband, and to give him the respect through my speech that he needs. Well, I love you today, and I'm going to pray for you. Father, I so thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit and for these precious women that are listening to me. And Lord, I just speak your blessing over them, and I thank you for your power that is on them right now to make that decision to turn from that place of criticizing or fault finding or trying to change him and to using their mouth to bring respect and admiration to him and to affirm him. And I pray that in the powerful name of Jesus. All of us want our relationships to grow and improve. For example, don't you want your marriage to be in better shape than it is right now? Even if things are going well, you probably see areas where it could be improved, right? In this candid 16-part series, Denise Renner hilariously and compassionately reveals areas where all of us can do better in our relationships, and especially in our marriages. Sometimes little changes make big differences. Titles in this series include, Help, my mouth is making trouble for me. Who is in control here, my mouth or me? I thought I was supposed to change it. Help me, Lord, I need to forgive. I thought I had already reached my forgiveness quota. Rick Renner says, this series is so awesome. Every person will laugh their way to transformation as Denise candidly addresses areas where we can all improve. This life-changing 16-part series is available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $25. And today only, Denise's book, Who Stole Cinderella, is available as our free gift to you. Just call the number on your screen or visit renner.org free today only. When you call or go online to request it, your life will be enriched by biblical wisdom as Denise sheds light on your path to happily ever after and shows you right where to begin again if you've lost your way. Get Denise's book, Who Stole Cinderella, for free today. And don't miss this powerful teaching series. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Thank you for watching this broadcast. For more information on product resources or to learn how you can partner with this ministry, please connect with us at renner.org. Also, please be sure to visit us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If that teaching helped you, would you please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.